to sparges in this way also because they the pressure loss is very low and as i said there is no problem of clogging in in single nozzle sparger <coughs> so it is one of the major uh, major uh, major factor which controls the efficiency of fermentation oxygen supply uh, in uh, in the fermentation will be carried out in form of air bubble and the uh, oxygen will be transferred from the air bubble to the uh, bulk liquid medium and from in the bulk liquid medium it will be ultimately transferred to the surface of the cell microbial cell from where it will enter into the cell and utilized by the organism for metabolic activity so uh, a path for oxygen from the air bubble to the uh, in internal uh, inside of the cell is we call the we'll, we call the whole process as a mass transfer and mass transfer not only it is used for a uh, gas but it can also be used for other substances but uh, mainly when the one substrate is transferred from one place to another place in a fermentation system we we are using a term which we call as mass transfer and during this transfer the transfer rate overall transfer rate from the point of entry to the ultimate uh, destination will depend on the kind of resistances offered during its path or during its travel from one entry point to the uh, final destination point so which are what are the types which is what is the which path is used for transfer what are the uh, resistances which are offered during this transfer we will just try to have a look or the over uh, overview of this uh, process where uh, where the oxygen is transferred from the air bubble to the surfaces of the cell so you can see the see in the figure that the oxygen is entering from the air bubble which is introduced uh, air stream is broken up into air bubble and this air bubble then serve as a source of oxygen and you can see the uh, uh, formation of two films around the boundary that is interface of air bubble and liquid medium and these two boundary uh, uh, these two films which are not ex exactly the physical form of the films they are the imaginary films or the effective distances in which the rate of transfer will matter so you can see a uh, formation of two films around the boundary interface of the air bubble and these films are known as gas film which is inside of the boundary and the outside of the boundary is known as liquid film so resistance is offered in this film will ultimately decide the transfer rate from inside that is we call it as a bulk gas phase to bulk liquid medium so you can see that the these two films are offering the resistance and which is which matters as i said they are, they are not the physical existence they are not the physical structures they are the imaginary films and the effective distances which ultimately determines the rate of oxygen transfer however a gas film the resistance offered by gas film will be comparatively e low to liquid film so ultimate transfer rate from bulk gas phase to bulk liquid phase is determined by the oxygen transfer rate in the liquid film and after entering into the bulk liquid phase the oxygen will travel uh, to the uh, surface of the cell and after reaching to the surface of the cell it will go into the cell where it will be utilized for the metabolic activity of the organism so this is the path and these are some of the resistances offered during the travel uh, in the two films and also in the bulk liquid phase and also in crossing the surface of the cell these are the resist uh, main resistances barrier this is an overall equation which uh, will concentrate not uh, will concentrate only the uh, main parameters which are uh, playing a major role in deciding the oxygen transfer rate you can see uh, that overall oxygen transfer rate is determined by an equation which is which is as follows kl into a in the bracket c aesthetic minus cl where a uh, kl is a transfer coefficient which is mainly a coefficient of the liquid film as i said the transfer rate in the liquid film ultimately is responsible for the overall transfer from from bulk gas phase to the bulk liquid phase so kl is the main transfer coefficient 
which is uh, for uh, liquid film. A is the area, specific exchange area, which is involved in the uh, exchange of oxygen in, in the, in, uh, in the uh, liquid film. Uh, C aesthetic is the saturation value of the dissolved oxygen gas. C L that is the concentration of oxygen in the liquid bulk liquid medium, and O T R is the overall transfer rate. So uh, mainly this equation will tell you uh, what kind of uh, 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 parameters are involved and how these parameters are affected. So in order to understand the oxygen transfer from bubble that is bulk liquid uh, bulk gas phase to bulk liquid phase will be decided by these parameters that is KL, A, C asterisk and C L. So in order to carry out efficient addition we will have to understand how this what these parameters are, how they are determined and what are the effects of different parameters on this uh, KL, A, C asterisk and C L. As I have said KL is the mass transfer coefficient and A is the area through which the transfer takes place. These two parameters, if you want to measure these two parameters independently, it is not possible, it is very difficult and in order to uh, measure these two parameters, we, uh, we have methods which are used for determining this parameter combinedly. So, we always go for these two parameters in a combination and the combined uh, termin terminology used for KLA is a volumetric mass transfer coefficient. So, in order to measure uh, KLA, we, uh, we are using methods which will determine these two parameters uh, simultaneously and uh, this will be termed as volumetric mass transfer coefficient KLA and KLA gives us the addition capacity of a system. So, if we measure the KLA value, we will be able to know what is the aeration capacity of the fermenter and as I have said this aeration efficiency will help us in maintaining the minimum critical level of the oxygen in the fermentation system. So it is very necessary, it is very essential to find out the KLA value of uh, uh, any system mainly fermenter. So uh, it is as I have said it is a parameter which is which gives the aeration efficiency and it also will allow us to know, enable us to know what kind of quantitative effects the other parameters will have on the oxygen supply and this value is also used during scale up process that is when we are transforming the data from one level to another level and we will see the methods which are mainly used not in detail just the outline of these methods so that uh, we will be able to know how this KLA value is determined. There are basically three methods which are used uh, in industry or at laboratory level and uh, they mainly uh, this uh, methods to be used depends on the type of system we are uh, studying. So at laboratory level we are mainly using a sulphide oxidation method uh, which is generally a very simple method where we are using uh, sodium thiosulfate, uh, sodium sulfide solution, oxidation rate of sodium sulfide solution in presence of catalyst and oxidation rate will ultimately give us the uh, uh, oxygen transfer rate. Mainly the principle is that the oxidation rate uh, is as fast as utilization of oxygen it enters into the system. So when we measure the oxidation rate, it indirectly gives us the idea about the oxygen transfer rate. So uh, that uh, this particular method is a simple method as I have said we are using sodium sulphide solution but the drawbacks are many and that is why it is not used at the industrial level. It is a very slow process and uh, also the rheological property which we will see what is the rheological property of the liquid that is, that is the flow behavior of the liquid system liquid medium and the rheological property of the uh, sodium sulphide is does not match or it is very very different from that of the actual fermentation liquid system. So we are uh, not using this particular method at industry level. The method used at industry level is a gassing out technique where we are using the 
again we are using the oxygen transfer rate but basically we are reducing the oxygen concentration to a minimum level and then we carry out aeration and agitation so that uh, uh, we can get the idea of what is the transfer rate but the purpose of reducing the oxygen concentration at the initial level is to get the accurate uh, value of uh, the aeration efficiency. So basically we are not going into the detail of these two methods where we are uh, mainly using two different approaches to reduce the oxygen, oxygen concentration to a minimum level, to a critical level and uh, although uh, these methods are costly compared to the sul sodium sulfide method. They are used widely because here actually we are using the fermentation system. That is, uh, in a static method we are using the fermentation broth and carry out aeration and agitation and we find, try to find out the aeration efficiency of the system that is KLA value of the system. And in case of uh, the dynamic method we are using not only fermentation broth, we are also using the organisms present along with along, uh, present in the medium and we are using the respiratory activity of the organism to lower down or to reduce the, the concentration of oxygen to a minimum level. So we are using these two methods uh, and uh, as I said the advantage is that we are using the actual fermentation system, fermentation broth and uh, the uh, we are also we can also use the organism itself. But the major disadvantage of these two methods is that we have to use an uh, electrode which will, not, uh, which will differ uh, in uh, displaying the uh, estimate value because there is a time difference between the measurement and the displaying of the. Uh, so that is one major ad uh, disadvantage of uh, these two methods. Another disadvantage is that uh, in order to carry out oxygen transfer rate. Uh, to determine the oxygen or aeration efficiency of the fermenter, we will have to uh, carry out measurement at different levels in the fermenter and so a single point measurement will not be uh, applicable or will not give us the exact value of the aeration efficiency of the fermenter. The third method which I have not uh, uh, shown here but the third method is oxygen balance method and that is very widely used in the uh, industrial uh, processes and uh, that is based on the, uh, the, the uh, measurement of the several parameters at the inlet level and at the outlet level. So uh, that also method is very widely used but as I have said we will not go into the detail of that matter. Now uh, in order to know uh, what are the parameters or how, the effic how efficiently we can carry out uh, the uh, aeration in the fermentation we will have, we'll have to know what are the factors which are affecting the aeration or the uh, transfer of oxygen from bulk phase to the surface of the cell. And as, I was, uh, as we have seen in the earlier equation that th there are basically uh, four parameters which are involved in overall transfer rate that is scale value, a area the C aesthetic that is saturation oxygen concentration and the dissolved oxygen concentration in the liquid medium. So uh, we will just have an overview of how these factors are affecting the overall transfer rate. The, so th if we consider the bubble, air bubble, you can see that the uh, factors which are affecting the air bubble size would be uh, influence of gas velocity on the bubble formation. You can see the three figures on the left you have a figure which shows the uh, velocity of the air at uh, low level then medium level and at the fast level and uh, see the size of the air bubbles which are formed in the medium and uh, the at lower velocity the bubble size is more compared to the higher velocity and if the size of the bubble is more the area available for transfer would be less. That is a, a basic physics law which says that the more uh, greater the size the available surface area would be less for transfer. A uh, second factor which will affect the uh, uh, bubble size would be the liquid properties. Uh, the liquid properties you can compare the two uh, tubes A and B. Uh, in A uh, one liquid is flowing and in B tube another liquid is flowing where the two liquids differ in their contents and in the liquid B we have some of the salts added. So when you 
uh, compare these two figures A and B, you can see the effect of presence of ingredients or components into the medium and uh, that will affect the size of ultimately affect the size of the bubble. So in the A you can see the bubble of smaller size on the B on in B you can see the uh, size of bubble increasing that is because of the coalescence because of the addition of the bubble which is taking place due to the presence of the components like salts into the medium. So uh, in B the area available would be less whether whereas in A it would be more. Similarly uh, the other factor which will be affecting the transfer from the bubble to the burst liquid film is the hold up time. That is for how much time the air, bu uh, air bubble is hold up into the medium that depends on the volume of the fermenter uh, liquid medium uh, volume of the liquid in the fermenter and also it will depend on the pressure on the bubble. So at the bottom the pressure would be more and the velocity of the bubble rising in the fermenter would be low. So there will be more hold up time for the bubble at the bottom compared to the top as it travels to the top the pressure would decrease and the velocity of travel of the bubble would increase and so uh, the hold up time will depend on the two factors one the volume of the fermenter uh, volume of the liquid in the fermenter and second it will also depend on the pressure that is the position of the bubble in the uh, medium so uh, that is about uh, the aeration, the, uh, the uh, devices which are used for carrying out aeration, the fermenter, uh, we have not talked into detail about the other parameters which are affecting the transfer rate like uh, the liquid film thickness, the turnover rate of the liquid film and uh, that is uh, affecting finally the KL value. We have not discussed about the C asteric and CL, these all factors are affected uh, and it is not just an independent parameter which will be affecting the aeration transfer rate. It will be a complex process where many of the parameters will be interacting and finally deciding the uh, overall aeration rate in the fermenter or oxygen supply rate in the uh, liquid medium to the organism. So uh, after uh, seeing aeration we will come to the another aspect of the, the fermentation process and that is agitation and agitation is carried out carried out in the uh, in the fermenter in two ways either we are using the stock